Hi there guys and welcome back to another video. There have been many complaints from the community regarding Vindictor Challenge Mode and how difficult it is and how many life points it has. Now firstly, I have to agree that considering this is supposed to be a mid-tier level boss despite being the harder version, it does seem to require a little too much skill and attention to detail, especially in comparison to other mid-tier bosses like God Wars Dungeon 1. So from that aspect, I do understand the outcry. I also do have to say that the loot is very mediocre for how long it takes to kill it and really has no proper reward compared to the normal mode. The pet drop rate is only half of that which is in the normal mode version compared to God Wars 1 which is increased by 5 times and the normal loot is very similar and the drop rate of crests and lances don't seem to be significantly better. Anyway that's just my view, moving on to the guide. First off then as in any guide is gear. Definitely best to use melee, using Dragos or Scythe doesn't really matter which, whichever your preference is or which you own. Um, I advise taking your best DPS armor, um, simply because it is a lot of damage, 600k, and if you are in tank armor, it will actually take longer to kill. It might be better off eating a few food and using DPS gear just so you hit a bit better. On screen you can see the setup that I use, and I switch between Dragos and Scythe according to whether I want to hurricane or destroy. The most important part of this gear setup is the Vampirism Scrimshaw. This is because the life points of Vindictor and Gorvec in challenge mode is 600k and this will save you loads of food throughout the fight. It also means you heal without losing any adrenaline. So, to start off the fight then. So build some adrenaline if it's the first kill of the trip outside on the minions and then when you go in, do a full Zerk rotation. Use planted feet if you have it, if you don't, don't worry. As soon as you start the fight, I also recommend to use Dreadnips. So just put a nip out straight away. After around 20 seconds, then start running. Doesn't matter, really matter which direction, but this is basically because Vindictor will then get Gorvac to fire Dragon Breath. If you are already running, then it's much less chance that you're gonna get hit by this. The timing of this can vary according to whether or not your Dreadnip manages to stun it and at what point. After this, then do your all your bleeds, including Slaughter and Tendrils, as well as then using a second set of thresholds. You can also debilitate as well, which I find helps. Now when the life points hit 150k, Vindictor will then jump onto Gorvec's back, who does 3 attacks before jumping and doing Dragon Breath again. These attacks are on the order of melee, range and then melee, and you should flick your prayers accordingly. The hits are really clear and do not require fast flicking. On every second one of these rotations, I advise switching to your defender or shield and resonancing the middle range hit. At the same time as this, you should have built up to Zerk and be able to Zerk again. Now clearly this can hit you quite hard so just be careful and it might be wise to resonance whilst you're zerked in that middle range one just so it doesn't hit you. It can hit up to 5k um, even through prayer so just be wary of your life points. After the third melee hit, start running again in order to avoid the dragon breath. According to how good your DPS is, and this will probably improve over time, this phase will go faster and you'll have less and less of these rotations. Finally, when you're coming low to the life points of Vindictor and Gorvec, try and build back up to 100% adrenaline as it's very useful continuing through to just fight the rest of Gorvec. It's also advisable to alternate between devotion and debility if you find yourself not able to maintain your life points. There are three main things regarding this, the final phase of this fight to remember. Firstly is that it attacks every 1.2 seconds or 2 game ticks, which can be quite fast so make sure you don't go down to too low life points. Secondly, these attacks can hit 1.5k's consistently through prayer, so be wary of that. Every 10 attacks Gorvec does, he will then jump back into the middle of the arena and fire Dragon Breath. You don't need to count these attacks exactly, but it helps to know roughly when he's going to do it. As soon as I know roughly when it's done about 8 or 9, I start to run again. When transitioning into this phase, try and have as much life points as you can, use a brew or two at the end of the last phase, and ensure that you have 100% adrenaline. This means that you can then re and use your adrenaline pot straight away so that you can get a nice early assault off. Also, it's now essential not to forget nips as this helps to slow up its attacks massively. After this first zerk, you then want to rotate between using Devotion, Debilitate and if you need be, use Revenge and Reflect as well. Revenge is surprisingly effective with a tier 90 defender due to the nature of these quick attacks which means you can build up to lots of stacks nice and early and then use Assault and Destroy and hit constant 5k's. It also provides that added defense bonus for if you need to gain some life points. After this, it's just rotating through, making sure you use bleeds. Whilst revenge, you can also use resonance. That's pretty much it for the guide. Uh, to get the rest of the life points now, and just keep DPSing, use slaughter and tendrils. And then I try and re roughly when it hits about 100k, and just finish it for off from there. If you're after specifics, then just have a look at how I do it on screen. 
As I said before, and as shown on screen, it's perfectly possible to do with a little bit of practice to do kills without using any food. And if you are going for that insane final boss requirement of 100 kills, then I hope this guide helps. Like and subscribe for more videos, guys, and I hope to see you in the next one.